Let's solve a second uh, problem involving compressors. So we'll make this one a refrigerant compressor. Refrigerant 134A enters an insulated compressor operating at steady state at saturated vapor at minus 20 degrees C with a mass flow rate of 1.2 kilograms per second. Refrigerant exits at seven bar 70 degrees C. Changes in kinetic and potential energy from inlet to exit can be ignored. Determine, first of all, the volumetric flow rates at the inlet and exit, each in cubic meters per second. And secondly, the power input to the compressor in kilowatts. Let's lay out our storyboard, beginning with the schematic. We have a compressor. Um, flowing through it is refrigerant 134A. We'll define the refrigerant um, inside the compressor between the inlet and the exit as our system. Uh, this is an insulated compressor, so there's no heat transfer from the system to the surroundings. But the compression process does require that uh, power is input to the compressor. Now, this statement gave us uh, fully defined conditions at state one and state two. State one, uh, the temperature was given and it's a saturated vapor, so its quality is one. State two, uh, the temperature and pressure fully define the uh, state. And for this process, there's no heat transfer to the surroundings and the mass flow rate was given as 1.2 kilograms per second. Well, let's uh, draw a TV diagram for this. Uh, we've got a refrigeration, uh, a refrigerant, and so we're gonna draw a vapor dome here. And we know that state one uh, was saturated vapor at minus 20 degrees C. So it's going to be right here on the saturation line. And in the saturation tables at minus 20 degrees C, we will find that the saturation pressure is uh, about 1.33 bar. Now from state one, we compress the refrigerant to a higher pressure and a higher temperature. We know both. And if we look in the saturation table at seven bar, we see that the saturation temperature is uh, only 26.7 degrees C. But here at 70 degrees C at state two, this is greater than the saturation temperature. So clearly state two is superheated. And of course it would have to be from state one as we compress it, there's no other place for it to go. It can't cross into the vapor dome because then that would be liquid in it and you cannot compress liquids. Compressors have to have gaseous or let's say vapor states at both the inlet and the exit. So state one's a saturated vapor, state two has to be superheated. And we plot that here at seven bar and 70 degrees C. We're gonna model this as an open system operating at steady state. We're gonna ignore changes in kinetic and potential energy as being insignificant. There's no heat transfer from this process. And we are asked to find the volumetric flow rates at both the inlet and the exit and the power requirement of this compressor. Well, to find volumetric flow rate, let's write a continuity equation. We know the mass flow rate is just the volumetric flow rate divided by the specific volume, and that's true at both the inlet and the exit. So we can find some necessary values for this problem in the uh, R134A tables. We'll begin in the saturation table um, as a saturated vapor at minus 20 degrees C. And we know the specific volume at state one is just gonna be V sub G, which is the specific volume of a saturated vapor. And we can pull that value out of the table. And we know the enthalpy at state one is just H sub G, it's the enthalpy of a saturated vapor. And we have that value in the table. Now for state two, we can get the same values in the superheat table at seven bar and 70 degrees C we can get a, a value of V2 and a value for H2. Now we can calculate the volumetric flow rates. The uh, volumetric flow rate is just the mass flow rate times the specific volume. 
The mass flow rate is 1.2 kilograms per second for both the inlet and the exit, but the specific volumes are different. We um, pulled this value for uh, V1 from the table, and we pulled this value from as V2 from the table. And we see that the volumetric flow rate at state one is 0.1757 cubic meters per second. And the volumetric flow rate at state two is, is about a quarter of that. And that's because the uh, gas has been compressed. Now we'll uh, find our work term from an energy balance. We know DEDT is zero because it's operating at steady state. And that's equal to Q dot minus W dot plus M dot times change in enthalpy plus change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy. Now this um, compressor is insulated, so Q dot zero. Uh, we were told to ignore any changes in kinetic and potential energy, so we'll take those terms as zero also. And so uh, simplifying and rearranging, we get the, uh, uh, the work or the power for this system is just the mass flow rate times H1 minus H2. And remember that uh, W is positive when the system produces work. So we'll plug in our value, uh, known value of 1.2 kilograms per second as the mass flow rate. And then we plug in our enthalpy values. And we get the W dot, which is the work uh, done by the system we get a minus 86.15 kilowatts. The negative indicate that it's not work done by the system, but it's work done on the system, which of course it has to be for a compressor. We have to put power into the compressor in order for the compression process to take place.